Please be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I think I know a lot of you, but Frank Fetchett is my name. I'm with Voices, and I kind of head partnerships and operations at Voices. Yeah, it's my pleasure to welcome everybody in the room and those joining on live stream. I think, as you know, we've got a large live stream contingent. And as of uh, midnight last night, we had 28 states represented with attendance and 15 countries. So I think that speaks to linked. It speaks to Invictum and the, uh, the footprint of voices. I think our hard work has paid off. We're kind of proud of this agenda today, and we really appreciate all the presenters coming by to, uh, to join us. What do we want to accomplish in uh, today's program? Well, twofold, uh, sharing relevant information and lessons learned, and so we can all grow together, and the importance of collaboration, and more about that uh, as, as the day goes along. Uh, we've had a long story collaboration with uh, LINKED, which of course is the Leadership in Counterterrorism Alumni Association, and in Victim, which is the international network supporting victims of terrorism and mass violence. And these groups bring, bring together the really worldwide experts, esteemed experts, that work seamlessly in pulling information together and responding. You're going to hear victim-centered approach quite a bit today, because more and more I think we see law enforcement and the broader network uh, looking at a victim-centered approach. The agenda we feel uh, really will get to the uh, goals we've set out. Um, John Miller is going to be keynote, and John's with us uh, this morning, and he's going to talk about building trust in turbulent times. We want to understand the threat together, so we have a level set on a module on that. Uh, John's going to take us through Canova and what's going on in, in, in going after the major actors in the IRA troubles, and there's a framework there I think we can learn from. Um, then we get into understanding better the victim-centered approach. Uh, Director of, of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas will be with us later today. And then we conclude with a really historic and remarkable look back on the 9-11 Commission. Uh, Governor Kane will be in, other leaders from uh, the Commission and from that program. We're actually uh, fortunate there'll be a pre-release of a documentary on the Commission that's going to be released next month, and the title of that is Are We Safer Today? Uh, and just like any event like this, sponsors make it happen. And I want to thank our sponsors for their support. The logos are on the screen. You'll see it in the printed programs. It's been on our website. Uh, they'll be on posters out there or out and about around the Marriott. The leading sponsors, the commemorative sponsors, Turkett Heath and Macaulay, Motlin Rice, uh, Motley Rice, Remembrance Sponsors, the Deary Law Firm, we have their logos. If we could give them a round of applause. And our legacy sponsors, of course, Linked, uh, John, you and the team at Secured Communications, Mercury Secured Communications, TPICAP, Kreinler Law Firm, FT Cares. Again, we couldn't do this without the sponsorship. So a round of applause to all the sponsors. And speaking of secured communications and uh, Mercury Workspace, uh, we tried to give you a heads up about downloading that app. And if uh, you have not, it's going to be used for submitting questions. It actually, actually worked quite well in, in London with the linked conference. So if you haven't downloaded the app, uh, if you would do so at the break, and uh, John has some of his folks here at a table that could help you if there's a problem with it. And I think on the, uh, each of the tables we have um, a code for you to be able to go ahead and, and, and download that app. So all questions should be asked, and for those that are w looking at the program live streamed, obviously using that app will get your question in here. We'll get it, uh, get it in front of the, uh, the speakers during the course of the day. Uh, other pieces of administrivia. So feel free to post on social media. We're going to be doing a lot of that today. Uh, I think we're all kind of used to that. So if you see something you want to get out into your network, feel free to do it. Uh, please silence your cell phones, restrooms across the hall, directly out to my right, your left. And um, the Voices staff, if you're in the room, if you could raise your hand so that people can see. I can't see with the bright lights, but we probably have Leanne and others in here. Stephanie. Uh, they're out at the tables. If there's anything you need at all today, 
seek them out. Uh, one comment on security, just use good judgment when you're leaving the room as far as what you're leaving at your uh, spot. And Wi-Fi, some, some folks are asking about the Wi-Fi password. When you go on, you'll see something that says Marriott underscore conference. Uh, that's the link you want, and the passcode is NYC Symposium 2022. Um, and we can get you that further. So with that, I think, Mary, you wanted to, oh, we're gonna show the video next, I'm sorry. Uh, we, have a, we have a short three-minute film that look back on our 21 year history as voices, and I think does a pretty good job of talking about the journey we've all been through. So let's run that film, please. On September 11th, 2001, dawn emerged under a clear, brilliant blue sky. Within hours, the United States would suffer its darkest day. Channeling their grief into action, Mary Fetchett and the late Beverly Eckert established Voices of September 11th. Drawing upon her professional background as a clinical social worker and first-hand experience as a mother of a victim, Mary recognized the challenges families faced in accessing information. Through Voices, she was committed to provide the support that families needed and deserved to help them heal and build resilience in their lives. As a victim's advocate, Mary became a subject matter expert in intelligence reform. Working alongside other families, she met with elected officials, held vigils, press conferences, and testified before Congress. Their advocacy efforts championed the establishment of the 9-11 Commission that led to sweeping intelligence reforms to ensure a safer country. Social work practices and a commitment to providing continuity of care permeates Voices' work. The organization pioneered a wide array of programs, including over 180,000 hours of social service support, hundreds of workshops, webinars, trainings, and symposiums. Voices established weekly teleconference support groups that connected 9-11 families living around the world. Voices staff was integral in assisting thousands of responders and survivors suffering from 9-11 related illnesses, applying for medical and mental health treatment through the World Trade Center Health Program. The 9-11 Living Memorial Project was created to help families commemorate the 2,977 lives lost and document stories of survivors. Voices staff provided the emotional support they needed to select photographs and personal mementos to memorialize their loved one in a meaningful way. Today, the Living Memorial is a core component of the In Memoriam exhibit at the 9-11 Memorial Museum. Voices has become a trusted international advocate and is honored to work with their partners to champion victim services and victims' rights through long-standing public-private partnerships with like-minded subject matter experts and professional organizations Voices assists communities impacted by mass violence, such as Parkland, Newtown, and Charleston. Voices Center for Resilience was built on the foundation of lessons learned while providing long-term support for the 9-11 community. Today, Voices is an internationally recognized nonprofit organization, sharing resources to help individuals and communities heal and build resilience. With your help, Voices Legacy will live on through support services, innovative programs, and the expansion of the Wolf Gruber Institute Digital Resource Library. Along with their national and international partners, Voices strives to promote mental health care and wellness for all those impacted by tragedy in the United States and abroad. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I want to also um, welcome everyone. My name is Mary Fetchett. I'm executive director of Voices Center for Resilience, formerly Voices of September 11th. And I also want to offer my condolences. We have so many people that are either here in person or online um, that um, you are from the UK or Canada, and we want to offer our condolences on the loss of Queen Elizabeth. This year, it's been a real honor to partner with Linked Alumni and Invictim 
two organizations with a shared belief that through collaboration, we're stronger together. Almost a decade ago, I was invited to speak at the Linked Alumni Conference in Los Angeles. At that time, they were interested in hearing from a victim's family member to better understand our experience and how they could incorporate a victim-centered approach in their work. I have to tell you, I was inspired by these dedicated professionals and the trusted relationships they had with their colleagues around the world. It demonstrated that much progress had been made since 9-11. Like Linked, and Victim is an international network of trusted professionals who share their years of experience. Sue O'Sullivan is the driving force behind the organization. As a former ombudsman in Canada with an extensive policing background, Sue has a passion for getting it right for victims. This symposium highlights three areas of focus, voices focus. Today's program, sharing lessons learned to help communities prepare for, respond to, and recover from acts of mass violence. As an advocate for the formation of the 9-11 Commission, tonight's discussion is near and dear to my heart. It's as relevant today, as we all know, as it was on 9-11. As is customary, tomorrow, in advance of the 21st anniversary, we bring together the 9-11 community for an update on, unfortunately, the myriad of issues that are still unresolved. Their ongoing journey has shaped our lessons learned and validated the importance of providing long-term support for the broader community. This year, we're announcing three or two initiatives. The Wolf Gruber Resource Library that was created in memory of our former um, long-time uh, chair of our board, uh, Kurt Wolf Gruber, who passed away several years ago. And we've taken on uh, the monumental task of archiving uh, the over 20 years of videos, publications, and so forth. And that's going to be an ongoing effort. And we'll be including uh, content publications from other people, uh, other organizations as well. And then we're also launching the 9-11 Living Memorial to commemorate the lives of the over 5,300 responders and survivors who have tragically died since of 9-11 related illness. We hope the symposium sheds light on the importance of collaboration and building trusting relationships during very turbulent times. And now I'll turn it over to Sue O'Sullivan. Sue? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. Um, I would like to welcome you on behalf of Invictim, uh, the international network supporting victims of terrorism and mass violence. And we are honored to be here, partnering with Voices and the Lincoln Alumni for this symposium. I have the privilege of being the chair of Invictim, which was created to bring together a group of trusted experts dedicated to improving support for victims of terrorism and mass violence. The strength of Invictim lies in the ability to share lessons learned, leverage the knowledge and ex expertise of our members and their networks to influence change and turn research into action within our own countries and globally. We understand the importance of international relationships. I describe the members of Invictims as weavers. We connect the many people we have the privilege of working with who are dedicated to supporting and advancing positive change for victims in their own countries and abroad. We work together with them to develop frameworks from which change can happen. Each of us has an opportunity to affect change, to be part of the international tapestry that makes our efforts stronger and more effective. To remember, to remember and help others to connect with individuals and organizations who can open the door to the unheard. We are stronger and better together. Credit for the accomplishments made to date must go to the many victims, survivors, families, and first responders who have had the strength and courage to share their journey and experience. 
Much of our work is informed by your voice, and we rely on your guidance to help us identify the support needed in the short, medium, and long term. To the passionate and dedicated individuals, along with victim-serving agencies, academics, and stakeholder groups, who not only work on behalf of victims every day, but who also share the belief that victims deserve to feel supported, considered, informed, and protected. Today, you have been given the gift of time to discuss the future of victims of terrorism and mass violence and practices and collectively identify hopes and strategies for mobilizing positive change for victims. I encourage you to continue to weave the global tapestry for change. Together, our collaborative push forward will continue to mobilize and affect lasting change. As we approach September 11th, we remember those you lost and are inspired by your courage and strength during this difficult time. Thank you very much. I'd also just like to mention we have many in victim members here in the audience today, so do make sure you network and get to meet them. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Hello, good, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm um, John Parkinson, the Executive Director of the Leadership in Counterterrorism Alumni Association. And, and firstly, my apologies, because you should have been hearing from our president, who unfortunately has been caught up in the infamous uh, New York traffic this morning. Um, just very briefly from me, because I didn't know I was doing this until two minutes ago. Um, <laughs> But, but our, associ our association uh, is another outcome of the 9-11 Commission, a desire to bring leaders together from across the Five Eyes, across the world, uh, that concentrated on counterterrorism uh, and all of the efforts associated with that in the many conflicts that have happened that have affected all of our countries and, uh, and communities. Um, we've now developed, I think, several hundred people from many of the agencies that are involved across the United States, across Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia and New Zealand. And we've come together in a regular program, many of which you'll see this afternoon on the current program that are joining this, uh, this group. But our alumni association stretches far and wide and has been involved in many initiatives that are about shared learning, exactly those issues that Frank uh, mentioned at the beginning. And one of those you're going to hear more about later on this morning is a shining example of the network of the Leadership in Counterterrorism Alumni Association and the work led by one of our former presidents, John Boucher, in Operation Canova. We've worked very closely with Invictim and Sue O'Sullivan, and we've been privileged and, and honoured to, uh, to have Mary and Frank with us on many of occasions over the last decade or so at all of our conferences. We have annual events, uh, both in the North and Southern Hemisphere, uh, and I'm delighted that we were asked to partner with, uh, with you, Mary, with Voices, and support you uh, here. I'm really excited to hear all the presentations and the things that we're going to hear about from uh, the joint collaboration between Voices in Victim and Linked. So thank you very much, Mary. We're very honoured to be here and look forward to uh, the two days. Thank you.